Hey, PewterCast fans, happy off-season. Hope you guys are soaking in the time off and, and enjoying the t- Okay, let's be honest. Aren't we all just ready to get back to some dang football? Well, guys, I can't do anything about the calendar, but maybe I can help us just a little bit in kind of keeping football at front and center where it deserves to be. And I'm going to do that by doing our first ever PewterCast giveaway. Now, you've heard us talking about changes that are coming to the PewterCast. This is going to be one of them. We're going to start doing some giveaways, which is going to be a ton of fun. And uh, that's right. It is a giveaway. This is something for free. You don't have to pay us for it. It's absolutely free. And here's what we're giving away. We're going to be giving away an autographed picture of Kevin Panfiel. He was nice enough to, to send me over one of these, and we're going to turn around and send it back out to one of you guys, one of our fans. That's pretty cool. It's a full-color photo of him. His signature is pretty clear as day. And uh, we're going to be giving it away. And all you have to do to enter to win this is head over to iTunes and leave us a review. That's all you got to do. Now, if you're already subscribed to us on iTunes, uh, you're going to need to search for us like you aren't subscribed to us, and you'll see the review tab there. Uh, you leave the review, take a quick screenshot of it before you hit submit, okay, just before you do that, and then send it over to me saying, hey, this was my review, and uh, email it to me at theputercast at gmail.com. That's it. Leave us a review, send us the screenshot, and you're entered to win. It's as simple as that. Welcome back, PewterCast fans. This is episode number 32, Peeking Over the Fence, and it's time for the top three of the week. And we thought we'd kind of float this fun question out to each other, uh, where we just asked if we were to redivide the league, what would the top three teams be that we would want to start a new division with? So, Ren, as always, I'll start with you. What criteria did you use, and what is your number three team that you'd want to be in a new division with? Well, obviously, I mean, we've talked a little bit about this before, so uh, I think our correct tiers are going to be pretty similar. But obviously, first thing, nobody that's in the division now. It's not really the point of this. Uh, right. It's supposed to be fun and, and, and maybe give you something to think about. And then secondly, obviously, how far a team away doesn't count. Like, you know, uh, it doesn't matter if if I pick the Raiders and, you know, they're over on the West Coast and then I pick like, you know, I want to pick someone up north and then and then someone, you know, in in London, like uh, we have a London team and I want them to be. So distance doesn't matter and nobody in the same division. Those are kind of my criteria. And then what I went with was not teams that I want to see at least once a year, not, you know, maybe there's a player that uh got drafted from you know the college that i like and and they're on that team and i want to you know and so i so i'm kind of following that guy so i root for that team on sunday a little bit Mm -hmm. none of that i went with garbage i went with teams that are garbage teams that are gonna be garbage and (laughs) you're trying to stack the deck there a little bit i'm stacking the deck i'm stacking the deck all right fair uh, enough so i picked and my so a criteria i kind of stuck with especially with the first two is bad ownership uh, okay. If the ownership is bad, then it's you're never going to be a good team. I don't care. Uh, I, I don't care how much money you throw at it. Uh, I don't care who you bring in to coach. If you have bad ownership at the top, then you're never going to be successful. So I'm going to start out with one that I spoke to a little bit before that I think has bad ownership, and a lot of people that are in the know agree, uh, and that is the San Diego Chargers. Uh, uh, the, span uh, of the, the, yeah. the Los Angeles Chargers now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. The Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, their front office is seen as frugal, uh, cheap to put it, you know, bluntly. Mm-hmm. Um, when Mike Smith was being linked to that job, I came out more than once and said, don't worry about it because that is a first time head coaching job. That's a rookie job. Uh, that's a job that, you're not going to get like a big job, you know, you're not going to go to the Dallas Cowboys. You're not going to get a Pittsburgh Steelers job, but you want to be a head coach and, you know, sort of stick it on your resume. 
uh, go. That's that's who goes to the Chargers, not Mike Smith. You don't know. It's either a coach on its last leg, uh, like maybe like a Rex Ryan or a newbie, and that's it. And that's because they don't have a good organization starting at the top. I mean, you see the mess they're in now. They're going to go play at like a basically a high school field. I think there's you know I think there's something like forty thousand seats and. They're not even you – know, who knows what's going on with that organization. But it's always been like that. Uh, the owners have run the team to make a buck, not to put winners on the field. Mm-hmm. So uh, stick with my criteria of bad ownership, which means you're never going to have a, a, a good team, a, competitive, a consistently competitive team, which will means we will win. I'm taking the San Diego slash Los Angeles Chargers. Well, that, well, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, yeah, my my criteria are very, very similar to yours, uh, with one exception there. Uh, I did I really threw out the current teams that we're in a division with because uh, I wanted to look at new teams. Also, I did not consider uh, distance, um, you know, because this is more in that fantasy idea. Uh, however, um, where you kind of said I'm going to stick with the bad teams, so to speak. Um, I didn't necessarily say that. In fact, and, and I'll explain that here in a little bit. But the next really criteria is what would be what would be a team that would make me go? I would find this an interesting game to watch twice a year. Like I, I would have some, I would kind of care about this particular team uh, or this particular game as it would come up twice a year. So um, with that, my number three team, uh, and it's not a super hot team. Let's face it, is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, and I've got a couple reasons for that. One, uh, as yeah. listeners of the show may know, I my family is moving to Jacksonville. I oh. will not become a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but I would love to. Uh, I'm now within driving distance of the of the team, so I'm going to be at all the home games. But to then get another quote unquote home game in my own town, that would be really cool. So um, I would love to see that. But bigger than that, honestly, um, the thing I feel like the uh, like we're missing is the in-state rivalry. You know what I'm saying? Um, like we don't really, as Bucks fans, think too much about the Jags or the Dolphins, uh, because they're both what AFC teams, right? Um, Correct. They they impact each other way more than they're going to impact us. So, um, you know, I'd love to see in a division, uh, kind of an in-state rivalry of teams. Like I think that would make it a more interesting game to watch. Uh, so for that reason, I pick the Jags based on the Florida rivalry aspect as my number three team. I like it. I almost went with the in-state rivalry uh, angle as well. Uh, ended up not, but uh, yeah, I, I I almost did it. And I like that way how you put it where you get to actually get to watch like nine games, nine right. Buccaneer games, <laughs> and one super close. Okay, so number two for me, uh, you know my criteria uh, you probably know this team is in disarray now. It has been in disarray since the Billionaire Boys Club bought it uh, a few a few years ago. I guess a couple decades ago now. Uh, the Washington Redskins. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Snyder will not keep his stupid nose out of of he can't, he won't he won't let his his football guys do the football thing. Uh, it is widely speculated uh, so much that you can probably say it's true that. There's a back staircase to the owner's office. That means players that have a gripe or a grudge or don't feel they're getting a fair shake or feel like uh, the coach is picking on them or not putting them in enough, they can go in this staircase and bypass everybody and go straight up to the owner's office, and he'll listen to you. And then he's gonna, and then he's gonna take what you say, and then he's gonna put it down on the coaches. Uh, the biggest thing I could probably think of. Uh, was the whole RG three thing? Uh, yeah, you had you had Mike Shannon as a coach. You know, he probably is a Hall of Famer as a coach. Um, he coached there for a long time, brought you to Super Bowls. Uh, he come back. He was uh, reviving the team, and then OG three went up that magical back stairwell and said. And this is speculation, but it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's been widely speculated. It was almost true. Basically, RG three made him pick. He's like, he's like, I don't like Coach Shanahan. It's either him or me. And Daniel Snyder said, Okay, RG three, you're my guy. 
and got rid of Shanahan. Now, three years later, RG3 can't find a starting job in the league, can't stay healthy. I don't even know if he'll play next year. So with ownership like that, you know, that's going to be a dumpster fire for a very long time until either he sells it or he, he changes his, his management style. But that's the reason for pick two. Uh, I want my division, so we'll be a winner, Washington Redskins. You like that? You like that? Washington no. Redskins. No, listen, hey, that's a, that's a good pick, at least for this year for me. Because you know we'd love to see D-Jax and, and Swaggy suiting up in, in pewter, uh, heading good up point. against those Reds, those Redskins this particular year. It, it'd just be fantastic to be able to see that. So, uh, you know, anytime you can snatch uh, snatch a player from a division rival um, – and, and be able to go back and play them. That's that's a fun little fun little jab, especially if you're going to be as good as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be this year. As we all know, they are going to be. So uh, love it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, for my number two, uh, Ren, I, I'm just going to tell you this particular pick is going to fly in the face of your whole criteria of pick the crappy teams um, in an exact opposite way. Because for me, this one is really the – um, it, you know, if you, people kind of rise to the level, to the, to the level of the water that they have. So I want to make sure that there's good teams around us that we can play up to, you know, uh, at least that's the philosophy. And I know you can look, uh, you can look at this team and see the other, the other teams that they're in a division with currently and go, well, they're not really rising, but I think we would. And so for that reason, as much as it pains me to say this, my number two, is the Patriots. Uh, I'd, I'd like to be in that division with them because I think having that caliber of... Um, uh, Sadist. Uh, yeah, masochism. Uh, but having that caliber of, of players that we have to go against twice a year, uh, I think only makes us a better team. And, um, uh, and, and listen, the Patriots have been on a roll for the last 15 years. That's coming to an end soon. It has to just, just law of averages, right? Like this is not it. This is not something that's going to go on forever. Yeah. Um, I've been saying that past 10 years. Exactly. <laughs> it's been going on five years. How much longer can this go? Just I'll never keep it up a decade. Um, but no, it, it does have to come down at some point. It's, it's going to level out. The parody is going to be there. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens, but uh, yeah, the Patriots uh, for that reason. And that reason alone, I have zero fandom of this team. But I have a lot of respect for the team, and that's why they make my number two. Yeah, uh, I don't mind that pick. I mean, I, I like the way you're going. You know, uh, it's okay to hate. It, man. It's okay. Yeah, to hate well, it. yeah, but you got you got to you know <laughs> to beat the best or to be the best, you got to beat the best. Right. So I dig it. Um, I would never do it. <laughs> <laughs> at, le- at least not till like Brady, you know, retires and Bel- who knows if Belichick's ever going to retire. You know, uh, yeah, you wouldn't voluntarily about... sign up for that one, huh? No, no, not yeah. at all. Not at all. But it's funny that you bring the Patriots up because as my number three, it's the rest of the AFC East. Like pick one. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and that's the reason why. I mean, I went back and did a little bit of research. Uh, since the year 2000, only three teams, like the Dolphins have won it twice and the Jets have won it once in 16 years. So the Patriots won thir- the division title 13 out of the past 16 years. And that's as far back as I went. Uh, I could have stopped it at 2001, but I wanted to make a nice round number. But, but, you know, the Dolphins won it back in 2000. So I got to win 2001 and, you know, had it like, uh, four, you know, 14 out of 15 years or something like that. That, that math doesn't add up. But, uh, uh, yeah, so pick one. I mean, When's the last time the Jets are relevant? You know, when's the last time the Dolphins? Uh, this isn't so much bad ownership. Uh, it's just they make poor choices, and that might be personnel. So uh, I know I have to pick one. Uh, I'm just going to pick the Buffalo Bills. That's uh, what I would simply have because, Yeah. Because it, they, uh, no, they're the one team that hasn't won the division. But honestly, and this is no offense, you know, to the people of the great state of New York, but who the hell wants to live in Buffalo? It's freezing. <laughs> they don't have a dome. 
You have to play outside. Your team's not good. I mean, I I I know the fans are great, you know, uh, but they're just it's they're like they're kind of like the Cubs of 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 the National Football League. Like it doesn't matter what. It's a terrible analogy. <laughs> the Indians. I will go to the Indians. They're just like it, no matter what they do, like they and. I just don't think today's player in the free agency market is going to want to go to Buffalo. They're going to have right. to overpay right. all the time because it's so freaking cold. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's not New York, you know, where you have to live in the big city and, and, and see all the – we were talking about Hamilton off the air, see all the Broadway shows and right. and enjoy all the – you know, you can actually you, – you can – your money – actually, you can use your money and have fun with it in New York City and Buffalo – yeah, I, you know, so that's what I'm taking uh, simply because if a team wins the division, I don't care how good you are. Some of those Patriots teams really weren't that good. They just got to play Miami, Buffalo, New York twice a year. Uh, winning the division gets, you know, usually gets uh, will get you by week more, more times than not. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, so. So my criteria of setting up my division is based with the Patriots have had yeah. for 16 years. Yeah. So I'm going to take Buffalo and that's, that's going to be it. So I've got the, uh, the Los Angeles chargers, the Washington Redskins and the Buffalo bills and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, and Buffalo has to play twice down here. The Bucks don't have to go up and play up north. <laughs> well, you know, the Bucks don't do that bad in cold weather from, from what we understand. Uh, at least, uh, not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Uh, you know, it, it, here's the thing. You asked, you know, what does Buffalo have? I, I, I can. Buffalo is fairly close to Niagara Falls, so they have okay. that. Um, okay. Watch waterfall. Okay, I've seen it. Don't have to go back that's, every weekend. Uh, that yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's all they got. <laughs> that's, that's you know, the, in I Canada. Mean, the Canada's right. The, in, in order to actually get a good view of the falls, you have to go into Canada. Um, but hey, maybe we can uh, maybe we can go visit uh, uh, some girlfriends that live in Canada. That would be a, a reference to Avenue <laughs> Q. Speaking of Broadway musicals, uh, <laughs> but I thought uh, you were talking about my first girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, the, my girlfriend who lives in Canada. Um, eh, you don't know her; she lives in Canada. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, yeah, the Bills, okay, or any of the AFC East teams. All right, I'm, I'm with it. I'll dig it. Uh, f- it matches the criteria exactly, and, and I fully understand why you would pick those guys and pick those threes. I will say this, though, and this may hit your honorable mentions, uh, Ren. I am shocked that you didn't have the Browns on this list. Well, I will talk about that. All right. uh, I will well, talk about that in the honorable mentions. Well, let's, let, before we get there, then I guess I will give my number one. Now, my number one I really vacillated back and forth on um, because there's a team that I like to watch. But then there's the team that my wife really likes, and and I I would just love a little inner house rivalry because because my my wife one of the things I love about her is that, that girl can trash talk with the best of them, and uh, you know to see her get she doesn't really care about football that much, but to see her get get up on a team, uh, especially when she thinks that that it's going to do something to me, because uh, she's just a little bit uh, she's kind of like that. But um, I love her for it. So for me, and this is completely a personal thing, but this falls under the what makes it interesting to watch. So I am picking the Indianapolis Colts, which is the team that she personally likes, uh, just because that would be a fun two games a year to have my wife in on. And uh, as the Bucks trounce the Colts, then I just get the, well, probably get to sleep on the couch. But um, I think that's just how that'll go. I, I, that's why I picked the Colts. It's my own personal thing. No other reason. I like it. Luck versus Winston twice a year. I'll take it. Those would be some good games. It'd be some good games. It would really yeah. be some good games. And, you know, who knows what's really going on with the Colts right now, you know, but, you know, historically they have recently been a good team. Um, talk talk and, about another crazy owner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, how Chuck Pagano still has a job, I'm not entirely sure given what's happened the last couple of years. But um, for his sake, I'm glad he's there. And, uh you know, I I'd kind of like to see the Colts come back a little bit and and do do better than they have recently, but uh, yeah, Luck versus Winston that'd be that'd be a good good set of games every single year. So, uh, with that, Ren, uh, honorable mentions. You said you were going to talk about the Browns. What? So obviously the Browns are there. You can talk about that. Any other honorable mentions you had as well? 
No, I didn't. I didn't have any. Uh, I pretty much just stopped at the three. Uh, and the reason being because I, if you weren't going to bring up the Browns, which uh, I wasn't sure you were, I was going to bring up the Browns. And the reason is because I like what they're doing right now. Honestly, uh, everyone made jokes about, you know, these, these uh, cybermetric guys they brought in uh, from baseball to run their front office. And uh, then they started letting go um, all their really good players, like their, their high draft players last year during last year's free agency. They weren't signing guys and guys were going away. And everyone's going, what are the Browns are doing? And then uh, this year they're terrible and they get the first pick. And then you look. And they've got like, and I'm not exaggerating, in the next two years, I think they have like 12 picks in the first three rounds. Yeah. Like they are stacked and ready. They are going to reload. And I think Hugh Jackson, their coach, everyone likes him around the NFL. I didn't really know a lot about him when he got the job. Uh, Cleveland, you know, is not a big, not a big talking spot around, you know, the, the NFC South or, mm-hmm. or the Tampa Bay area. So, I, you know, I just knew Cleveland was bad. But I, I think he's got a very long leash up there, and uh, they're going to let him build this. They're gonna, they just tore it down, and they're going to mm-hmm. rebuild it from the ground up, and I think they're doing it in a smart way. I mean, hell, they paid $10 million for a second-round pick this year. I mean, they, right. they, they had the space. They had the cap money, and now you see why they didn't uh, sign all these guys, let all their players walk last year. It's because you think they had a lot of cap money this year. They're going to have a lot of cap money next year, too. I mean, they can turn this thing around quick, and uh, that's why I don't want the Browns in division because my criteria is about teams that stink. I don't mm. think, and and I think the Browns are us like two years ago. Like honestly, yeah. like put put yeah put us there. Like this is the year. Like they draft Winston. They're obviously not, but uh, but that time frame. I mean, obviously they're going to need a quarterback, but uh, they're going to have enough talent to around there where they can get by with not having like, you know, a top 10 quarterback for a little while. I'm excited to watch it because, uh, I've always liked Cleveland fans, you know, maybe be rather be baseball or football. I just think they're, they're really nice people. They're cool people. They don't talk a lot of trash. They just really love their teams. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they don't, and they can't, I guess you really can't being a Browns or an Indians fan. You really couldn't talk a lot of trash for a lot of years, but, they're they're very they're loyal and they love their teams and so uh, I just I don't I don't have any hate towards them and I've always kind of liked the organization I like their color scheme I know that uh, players complain about the new uniforms I think they're cool I like them I don't know what it is about brown and orange together but I like it I like the Cleveland across you know across the chest but uh, I like the Browns down the leg but yeah that's why I didn't pick the Browns because I think that they're coming. And uh, if they figure it out, you know, they have to find that quarterback, not necessarily this year, but uh, I think they have the pieces in place that as far as front office and coach that are and the idea and they're executing it. So I don't I don't want anything to do with the Browns. You know, I, now that you put it that way, I'm with you. I'm with you. And it does it does feel like the last couple of years, you know, because they've had a revolving door at, at head coach position as well, kind of like we have. But it almost seems like they've just been looking for their right guy, and, and you know it seems like they might have actually found the guy that they that they like. Now they got to actually give him, uh, you know, weapons for Hugh. I think is actually what we're what we'll call this uh, these next couple of years. Yeah, that'll be real interesting. Let's watch the Browns and see what happens. Um, but we're really going to focus on the Bucks on this podcast. Uh, as far as honorable mentions for me, uh, I the other team that I really wanted to put on here was the Packers. Um, Coming from from the part of the country where I came from, we were kind of in their market. So I've watched a lot of Packers football, and you know, I, I can't. I'm not a fan of the Packers. I'm really not, but I do enjoy watching them. Um, so that would be another team that I would put on there. The Seahawks was another one, uh, kind of in that same reason for the Patriots. Like, it, it's a good team, and I want to play good teams. I want to be in a good division. Um, you know, so let the water level rise a little bit there. Um, so those were those were just kind of a couple honorable mentions for me coming out of this. Yeah, I'm with, I'm I'm with you. I I get that. I mean, that's definitely was a way to go with it. Like you could have picked like like three really good teams that have been good for a long time to make it like you know every Sunday. It seems like it's 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 a huge game. You know, it's like yeah. this is such a big game. 
You know, you really don't get that get that feeling all the time in the NFC South. You know, because you know we the teams fluctuate so much, and and you know I, I'm not gonna have even though the Saints are my rivals. Like after the game we played against Seattle, uh-huh. and the way their defense talked, you know, after you know they didn't score anything in the defense. Well, we shut them down after the first quarter, and you know, chirp back and forth, and then how uh, Mike Evans caught that touchdown over Sherman. How he likes mm-hmm. to chirp. Like if that became like get to play those guys twice a year that'd be fun that'd yeah. be fun so i see where you're going with that i get it yeah just make them interesting to watch well fans now we're going to turn this back on you we'd like to know how your picks stack up against ours what teams would you like to see in a division uh if we were to redraw the lines what teams would you like to see with the buccaneers well you can let us know by connecting with us on twitter at the Pewtercast, or leave us a comment on facebook.com forward slash the peter or shoot us an email to you guessed it ThePeterCast at gmail.com. Ren, before we move on, why don't we take a look at this week's poll? It's real bad, okay? I don't like those numbers at all. Just one poll? Those things aren't scientific. Yes, they are. All this is is science. This is math. Well, this week, you know, there's been a lot of talk about what's going to happen at the center position, Ren, and Dirk Cutter actually had some stuff from the owners meeting this last week here on Buccaneers Insiders Live, where he talked about the Ali Marpet at center uh, experiment is going to start. So we thought we'd ask the fans to say, who do you want to see start at center in 2017? And the options that we threw out there really kind of obvious was Joe Holly, Evan Smith, Ali Marpet, and then we uh, left a write in option. Uh, before we reveal who won, Ren, what did you put on this list? Uh, I've been on the Ali Marpet train uh, like the year before, honestly. <laughs> uh, that was before Sweezy went down. Uh, I'm I'm all in it. Uh, he was drafted as a center in mind. Um, I get the argument about you know, well, he's almost a Pro Bowl guard. Just leave him there. You know why? You know why mess with it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I get that argument, but. You know, um, I'm right with Dirk where he says get the five best on the field. And to do that, Allie has to play center. I mean, or Pample has to play right tackle and then put Sweezy and Allie. But anyway, sorry. I picked Allie Marpet. <laughs> I'm rambling. I picked Allie Marpet. Yeah, Ali Mar- you know, Ren, you and I were talking about this a little bit, uh, you know, off air. Um, it, I have never, I've not been so on the Ali Marpet at center train like a lot of people have been, like you have been. Um, and it's mostly, I think, just because uh, we hadn't heard anything official really come down from the team yet. And, and it, you know, it, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And Ali's doing, I mean, you could say the offensive line is broke, but Ali at guard is not broke. Um and so the idea to move him when we could actually have somebody come in who is who actually is a center, uh, I, I, it's it's not that I didn't want to see it happen. I just I wasn't all about it. So, uh, but now that that Cutter and, and Light have come out and said no, no, this experiment begins now. We are doing this. Uh, you know, I'm for it. I'm not against it. And uh, you know, one of the things we love best about Joe Holly being at center is his attitude. And what he brings there being right in the middle of the line. And and I don't think we're going to miss a step with Ali stepping in in terms of attitude. Because he's got some uh, – Ali's got some smack. He can get in there and talk some talk some crap to the guys across the line from him. You know, and, and Ali's not going to let anything happen. Uh, he's not going to let – he's not just going to let stuff slip by him. You know, Um He's going to defend his quarterback and he's going to defend his teammates. So, uh, you know, if, if Ali does it, I'm for it. I'm all for it, but uh, you know, I guess we'll just have to see what happens with the competition and how that shakes out. As far as you fans voting in this particular poll, uh, turns out that 72%, that is a large margin, overwhelmingly said Ali Marpet should start at center. Uh, followed up by 70, 17, sorry, 17% said Joe Holly, 6% said Evan Smith, and 5% clicked right in option. However, Ren, not a single person actually wrote back to us to tell us who they would want in. I think I think you have to reword that. I probably do. That that happens a lot. Like I don't think they really know. Yeah. It's well, a, I, like, usually tweet, I say like, usually like, I say tweet, tweet below. Well, yeah. Usually I say tweet me back, and and I get a couple that tweet back, but uh, this one didn't. They just uh, they just kind of did that. And unfortunately, Twitter only allows us so many 
characters even on those little uh, little things. So you gotta you gotta be judicious. Sure. Maybe we'll find out something sure. another way to say it. However, Ali Marpet is the winter winter or the winner of this week's poll. Well, guys, with that, we're coming back with a new segment called hashtag Ask PC, and that's going to wrap it up for this segment. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Right now, for you, the PewterCast fans, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Now, this month, guys, I'm reading. Okay, well, let's be honest. I'm listening to the book Smart Money, Smart Kids by Rachel Cruz and Dave Ramsey. You know, as a father, I really want my kids to win at life. And a big part of that, as I've recently come to realize, is that means that they also need to learn how to win with money. And this book is chock full of ideas that are age-appropriate lessons that, that, as a parent, I can actually be teaching my kids. So, uh, And it'll work for you. Whether your kids are already teenagers, no, it's not too late to get them started on this. Or whether you're like me and you have a four-year-old, it's not too early to get them started on this either. So I'm highly recommending Smart Money, Smart Kids by Rachel Cruz and Dave Ramsey. You can pick that up and read along with me. But, of course, you can download any of Audible's 180,000 titles that you can choose from, and they'll go to your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash theputercast. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash theputercast for your free audiobook. Welcome back, Bucks fans, to episode number 32, Peeking Over the Fence. And, Ren, uh, we're kicking off a new conversation segment tonight, which is pretty fun. Uh, it's one we're calling Hashtag Ask PC, which is basically uh, listener-submitted questions. Uh, all you got to do is on Twitter, uh, use the hashtag Ask PC. So we threw this out there a little bit earlier today. We got a couple answers back in. And uh, let's just kick around some answers that some of our listeners out there want to listen to how does that sound to you i'm ready all right well our first question that we have under hashtag ask pc is which prospect would you trade for if you had to i'm assuming this means uh in the draft you know which draft prospect are we looking for and uh i guess who would you trade up for to get if you had to if i had to i'd trade up for miles garrett i mean he's the best player in the draft he's in census number one now i don't think that's the spirit of the question uh, because, you know, uh, a la Mike Ditka, that would probably take every pick we had in the draft, and I'm still not sure Cleveland would even go for that. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming he means within reason, or he or she means within reason. Uh, who would I trade up for? I think, and this is kind of like a I, – I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for any of the running backs. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for any of the safeties. Even Obi, I know it might shock some listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, the one person I would trade up to go get would be Corey Davis. Uh, I think him and Mike Evans going forward at the uh, how young they are, uh, being a one-two punch after Deshaun Jackson's contract runs out. And you got to think, Deshaun Jackson, you know, he's he, he he's not on the field for 16 games that often anymore. Right. Uh, he's usually out like a game or two. So. Uh, I think the one-two punch, given their age, and then and then Winston have those three guys grow up together. If I had to go up like five or less, if you made me, that's who I would go after. I'd go get Corey Davis, wide receiver, Western Michigan. Interesting, and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm sitting here thinking about it, and this might be cheating in answering this, but I, I think my answer would be no one. I wouldn't trade well, up. You know, I wouldn't either. Um, and and, yes, and here's cheating. the thing. And because, well, because the, the answer says if you had to, and here's the thing, I don't think we have to like I, that. That's one of the things I've been talking about for this particular draft is, is I agree this with is you. A that's year. not the spirit of the question. I understand that. The question, if you had to, I'm holding a gun to your head, Brent. And I had to trade, I had to trade up, which means ostensibly I'm losing another draft pick from somewhere else. 
I understand. I understand. Yes. Okay. I would not Listen, do it I'm going to tell you what. If you bring a gun and you hold it to my head and tell me who do I got to trade up for, I will trade up for anyone at that point because I don't want to die. <laughs> okay? But as far as this team goes, I mean, I, I understand great, the there's question. There's a great kicker out of Arizona. <laughs> I will here. take him. Yeah. I will take him. I'll, tra- I'll give you my second and third round pick. Let's go get a kicker. I don't care. Right. But if you're okay. asking me for what, for which prospect would I trade if I had to – I, I, we just I, we just don't have to the, because the it's the point true. of that being there is nobody there is no position there is no one in this draft that I would trade away an extra pick for to go get you know I mean now if it cost us a second round pick to go up and get Miles Garrett should we do it yeah sure but uh, you know do we need to trade up and get McCaffrey or Cook or any of those guys no do we need to get Corey Davis I mean that'd be that'd be an interesting thought. But I don't think we have to, no, we you know, um, now in terms of, of being nice to, you know, like, like if you wanted to play the game, if, if you somehow maybe, maybe even like last year, you picked up, uh, you picked up an extra, an extra pick uh, that you could then kind of use that as, as trading fodder to trade up and go get, um, you know, if somebody fell to a later round that we might trade up and get them in a later round, um, it, you know, that might be something, uh, you know, somebody who unexpectedly falls. Um, That's what you're saying. Round you know, three. Yeah. Uh, pick 13, pick 14, round three. And you're like, our guy's still there. Let's go get it. Exactly. But as you guys know, my love of mock drafts, uh, I'm not Ooh. familiar enough, honestly, with all the players to be able to predict who that would be later on. But, you know, OK, so like if this was last year and uh you know we took Vernon Hargraves in the first which i had actually wanted to take Noah Spence even with the off the field issues i wanted Noah Spence in the first round personally last year when he was still available in the second round uh you know not Are knowing what to, out? yeah i'm freaking out and the fact that we still got him um you know i don't know what information uh, Jason Light had to know that he was or at least to be fairly confident he was still going to be there but um you know, my God, to sit and wait on him uh, to be able to, to to still take him there in the second round was was great. So that would be the only thing. Like if I had an extra pick to trade away and there was somebody maybe in a later round I wanted to jump up and get who had fallen, that might be the person I'm looking at. But, uh, you know, outside of that, it'd be a nice to have, not a need to have type of position. I feel you. You're right. But I was just taking – the question in the spirit of the question hold a gun to my head i'm gonna trade for anybody because it has nothing to do with the player at that point so. I, I feel you yeah but I, yeah i got you and, and i i understand that but if i was jason light which i would say i'm not uh i wouldn't uh i wouldn't trade it'd have to be a situation like it was last year where it comes down to 19 and i'd have to trade back first before i traded up probably but yeah that'd be what you said, like there's somebody there hanging around the third, the mid third, mm-hmm. and there's that's you had a second round grade on, and right. it's a need position, like you know package like package like the fifth and sixth round and go up and get your guy. I can see that, but predicting who that is is impossible. Yeah. So you have to stick yeah. to the first round. Um. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, I'm sticking with Corey Davis, but I understand what you're saying. I like it. Yeah. And hey, Corey Davis, I would love to see him in Peter and Red. All right, next question. I'm going to save this question until the end. Let's go on to the third one. Uh, what positions can the Bucks ignore this year? Obviously, we can ignore the quarterback. Um, what else? What, what do you think? Yeah, linebacker. You think we can ignore linebacker? What el- What other positions do you think we can ignore as the Bucks this year? In the draft? Uh, let's see. Uh, you could ignore running back if Doug comes, you know, if Doug Dougie works out. If he comes back, uh, mm-hmm. it's not a ne- uh, necessity. I don't think it's going to happen. You could make an argument. You could ignore wide receiver um, because you have Deshaun Evans and Hump. Hump's there. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to ignore offensive line. To be honest with you. Yeah, that was uh, going to be what I said was offensive line. I, I yeah, the whole the whole him. thing I'm across sorry. the offensive line. Because honestly, once you get out of the first round. Um, yeah, I just I think our offensive line is fine where it is. Um, in terms yeah, I didn't of, mean to just like run through all the. I forgot yeah. that you're answering too. I'm just no. running through them all. Uh, but yeah, uh, often if, if besides 
and I wouldn't actually be surprised if they don't take a linebacker like sixth, seventh round, but uh, uh, just, you know, uh, a prospect, you know, uh, a guy that's going to grow into the position. Um, but yeah, if I, I don't think they're going to take a offensive lineman in this draft, especially when Trevor told us, uh, Trevor Sikama from our uh, yeah. last podcast told us that they interviewed zero offensive linemen at the combine. Mm-hmm. Once he said that, and, you know, him, Peter Report, Trevor, and the guys at Peter Report, and a couple other places have been screaming. If anybody, if you'll listen, they've been telling you the Bucks aren't taking an offensive lineman. So that's probably what I'd have to answer that to. You know, and I think I've heard that message so loud and clear that I'm not even thinking offensive linemen anymore. Like it, it doesn't right. even blip on my radar. Like I'm, I'm good with the people we have. You know, people can say what they want about the offensive line last year. I'm okay with who we have this year going forward and and let's see what we have I, even the depth pieces the Caleb Ben and Knox and the Ben Gotch chalks and, and those guys like I'm okay with that group of people uh coming in for another year I will add one more to this and it's a position that a lot of people and even we have talked about Ren a little bit that that it's not a crazy thing for the Bucks to do to it's not a crazy thing for the Bucks to take but I also think that it's it's something that if they were to ignore it this year they'd be perfectly fine and that's the position of cornerback um, we still have Grimes. We still have Hargraves. Uh, we have JV and Elliott. It, it, we have Ryan Smith. If we were to not take somebody in the draft this year, I think that's okay. Um, with what we have, uh, certainly it'd be something we would want to look at for next year if we didn't address it this year, but I think we could ignore that and be okay. Yeah, we could. I agree, but I'm also starting to, <laughs> I'm also starting to lean as taking a cornerback in the first round. Yeah. Uh, here's my thinking. Sixty-five uh, percent. Uh, that's about average when the nickels on the field. So you know the Sam linebackers off. Now you take into the account that we play in a division with Drew Brees, Matt Ryan, and Cam Newton. Uh, arguably all top ten quarterbacks. So uh, they're going to throw the ball a lot. Uh, our nickel is Jude, who you know uh, he played very well. Uh, he definitely can be upgraded. After that, it was upgraded. It was, after that, it was JV and Elliott. You need – basically, you need three top-flight cornerbacks on your defense. It's mm-hmm. not – it is no longer a two-cornerback roster. Like, there are three starters, and if you get three really good guys, it's going to go a long way to winning ball games. Now, the way the draft's broken up, the top three running backs might be off the board. The top three wide receivers might be off the board. The top three safeties might be off the board. Well, guess what? The top three probably aren't going to be off the board. Cornerback. So you can get a top three, possibly top two, but I doubt it. That that a real a lot of funky stuff would have to happen. Mm-hmm. But you could get the third best cornerback in the draft, and have, and then and then when Brett retires, you know. You just you boop, you just slide one of them somewhere, and you just kind of don't lose a beat. So, yep. uh, I get you. Yes, you could. We could skip cornerback 100, percent but I can make an argument that you know you should take it first round. Uh, it's so great about this draft. We can go anywhere. Exactly, and and you would be 100 percent right. And I think I'd be 100 percent right that if we if we were to ignore, it, and I'm not saying that we should, and I'm not saying that we will. I'm just saying if we were to, I think we'd be okay. Agreed. I just think 100%. we'd be okay. All right, one final question, and Ren, I know this is your favorite question that you get of all time here to hashtag Ask PC. Record predictions for the year. What do you think? Ah. Uh, before the draft, record predictions, huh? Okay. Um, <clears throat> here's my logic. We went nine and seven last year. Yep. Uh, I think the addition of Deshaun Jackson and Chris. Uh, Swaggy Baker uh, have at least added uh, one win to it to minimum. So I'm going. I'm going to. St- I'm going to say ten this year. Um, I want to say eleven, but then you think about it, it means you only have five losses. Uh, I don't know what everyone else is drafting. You know, I don't even know when we're playing people. You know, I'd rather play Atlanta early in the year than late in the year. Um, just mm-hmm. because, like we talked about, the offensive coordinator and, and, and them trying defense coordinator and them trying to get things down. Now, I know when you look at the schedule at the beginning of the year, by the time, especially even kind of like around week four, by the time you get down to week four or five, what you thought was an easy game 
is not an easy game. Like the beginning of the year, the Dallas game was supposed to be like an easy game. It, yeah, that's why they were on our schedule. But uh, you know, Dak Prescott came out and Ezekiel came out, and and the whole thing just turned around and ended up being not an easy game at all. So playing it safe before the draft, I'm going to say Deshaun Jackson and Baker add a win with the um, maturation of uh, Hargraves and Spence and Winston and Evans and everybody. Uh, I'm going to say 10. I'm going to say conservatively 10. Yeah. You know, I, I get where you're coming from. I think I'm going to go that one step beyond though and say it's 11 and five. And here's why, because last year we easily could have been a 10 and six team. True. We there, you could even make the argument. We easily could have been and should have been an 11 and five team. Um, but it's just not the way it worked out. We came in as, as nine and seven. And, uh, you know, when you go back and you think about that Raiders game from last year, there's no way that that game should have done what it did. Right. Um, uh, you know, and you could say that about a couple of other, other games as well. Um, Rams. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you take back the Rams game, you take back the Raiders game. All of a sudden we're an 11 and five team out of last year. Not, not, uh, nine and seven. Um, so the idea that, that we could actually do that again this year and, and what we have now figured out how to do is to finish games with the upgrades that we have been able to make and, and that we will continue to be able to make with the shift in culture, uh, that we'll actually be able to do what we should have been able to do last year. Yeah, I could see that coming in. I, and to me, 11 and five seems conservative. Like that seems on the, I don't know if I want to say 12 and four yet. Um, 11 and five though seems, seems, uh, we've drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah. We've drank the Kool-Aid. So, well, we're going undefeated all the way to the bowl, baby. Let's we're get going it. 13, two and one. We're going to have 10 people in the pro bowl this year. Cause they're all awesome. And they are, they are. So that's, that's, that's true. That's and we, and happen, what was it? Sure. We put five people in the pro bowl, uh, this last year, like, which was like the most out of any team in the, in the league. So, um, I don't think that's true. I, I seem to remember that being true. <laughs> we'll do some research on it. Somebody out there, somebody out there in Buccaneer fandom, uh, quote me on that or, or, or find out, let us know, uh, if I'm right about that. I seem to remember that being the case. I think we put five people in there and it was like the most out of any team in the league. Um, I, I, I just seem to remember that i might be wrong probably yeah i think you're really wrong <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. last like the year you know what it's late Hawaii, it it's is late, late. It is we late. started this late. show on monday and it is now tuesday it is late so we started the show like last monday it is very true this has been the longest show ever well with that ren why don't you take us out of here man uh tell us where people can find you on the internet uh thanks everybody for listening to the podcast uh my name is Ren Dax, uh, R-E-N underscore D-A-X-T. Uh, find me on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to make a little plea here. Uh, I don't have a lot of followers. I mean, I have more than, you know, just the average little Joe out there. But, you know, uh, I do write articles, and I'm on a pretty popular uh, podcast. Uh, I, I talk Bucks football. You know, look me up. Give me a follow. Uh, I'm not begging for follows, but it'd be nice to, if, uh, if, if, you know, if you guys want to talk buck football with me, uh, we get thousands of downloads. Like these, 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 these podcasts get thousands of, of downloads. So I know at least a thousand people have, have heard it. <laughs> uh, and I'm not, I'm not, and I understand cause I'm, I'm one of those people, uh, my girlfriend makes up some type of, of syndrome for me, but I don't like being told what to do no matter how it is, you know? Uh, I don't like people tell me like commercials. This is where you should spend your money, or give me a follow, or do this, or subscribe. I get it. I understand. I'm just like you. But as we grow through this, we're you know we're 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 kind of like one little podcast family. Like I yeah. want to hear from you guys. I'm not some stranger, uh, you know, on some YouTube video that you saw. That's hey, won't you like and subscribe? Like you watch one time. It's me, Ren. You know, we're all in this together. Give me a follow, man. That's it. Yeah, and, and and with that, you guys can also follow me personally at Brent Allen Live, uh, and definitely make sure you follow the show at the Pewtercast. Um, you know, as as Ren said, there this really is kind of becoming this uh, community. You know, it's becoming this family. We've got friends that that tweet at us and and uh, uh, call into the live shows that we have, and and these are kind of the consistent people that we hear from quite a bit. Uh, and honestly. 
we've never met any of these people face to face. We've all met them through this community. We've gotten to know each other, and this community has grown. And let me tell you what Ren just said a few minutes ago. This community has seriously grown. Uh, you guys may be aware that these shows have become a bit lengthier uh, in, in <laughs> timeline. Uh, and even though there may be some annoying music at the beginning, we're still getting four stars on the reviews. And the, the numbers for this show are shooting through the roof. So I want to say thanks to everyone who's been downloading this show. Thanks to everyone who's been commenting, who's been sharing the show with their friends. Uh, to, to all of you who are new to the show, welcome uh, to the PewterCast. We love having you guys be here as part of the family. And uh, with that, guys, please, as Rin said, talk to us. You can let us know about your thoughts on anything we've had to talk about tonight, whether it's one of the other division rival teams, whether it's a new division rival that you'd like to see us be in and with. Who do you want to see start at center? Who, what, who do you want to see traded for in the draft? Or Are there positions we can ignore? What's your record position? Tell us. We'd love to talk to you about it because we definitely will. You can do that at the PewterCast on Twitter or Facebook.com forward slash the PewterCast or shoot us an email to the PewterCast at gmail.com. Hey, Ren, we've got a great guest lined up for next week's show. I know. I can't wait. Fantastic guest as we really turn towards the draft and we start taking a look at that. Can't wait for that one. You guys make sure you tune in here in just a couple weeks. We'll be back. And until then, go Bucks.